Most games have a certain level of difficulty that the player needs to overcome in order to keep going through the game. If the player fails, they must keep trying certain portions of the game in order to develop the skills necessary to continue. If the player succeeds, they'll keep going anyway. However, if the player is too good, they'll blitz through the game, no sweat. Some games include multiple difficulty levels to allow for players of lower skill to keep going, or to further challenge players of higher skill, but quite a number of games seem to do this poorly and it ends up just feeling like a cheap number tweak than a truly more challenging experience. A good example of this difficulty done right are the Thief games, where higher difficulty levels request the player do more tasks to continue, requiring a more advanced knowledge of the level and guard patterns. An example of it done wrong is Skyrim, where difficulty tweaks only amount of damage you do to enemies and enemies do to you, resulting in a heavy reliance on non-combat related pathways such as stealth and hacking, or on indirect sources of damage such as extra party members. Cook Serve Delicious is a little bit similar to games like Diner Dash, where you have to handle multiple orders at the same time. You also need to wipe dishes, take out the garbage, and several other extra tasks. Unlike other games, there's not a lot of restaurant simulation, but rather the game focuses on the finesse of reading orders and executing the short button sequences to prepare the meal. Some foods are nice and simple to execute, but they don't earn much money in game. Harder foods might require waiting for the meal to cook, or they might just be hard to input, or they might have complex recipes and require quick thinking or strong memory for remembering the recipe. Cook Serve Delicious handles its difficulty in a very unique way. The game is broken down into several stars of restaurants, and there's a clear minimum amount of tasks that need to be accomplished before you move on to the next star. Some of these are quite trivial, such as play for so many in-game days, get a certain perfect combo at some point, etc. The obvious difficulty gates are these bonus events that are isolated from the main part of the game and they test a few set of recipes under a closed environment. The player is required to be able to handle so many of a certain kind of order in a short time span in order to continue. But it's not too difficult to go beyond that minimum difficulty, which is where the buzz system comes in. This is an indicator of your restaurant's popularity in the short term. If the buzz is high, then you'll get many more customers on the next day. This buzz can be increased by adding more complex foods such as salads, soups, or burgers, but it's also increased by having a variety of foods. Having multiple fatty foods that are cooked quickly such as corn dogs, fries, and sopa peelers will reduce your buzz, whereas having some foods that require waiting for cooking or some that require some complex input, they'll generally increase the buzz. Most foods also become stale after being on your menu for more than two days, and this will reduce your buzz, so you're always encouraged to keep changing your menu and experiencing different kinds of foods, which means you're playing with different mechanics all the time. A higher buzz means you will have more customers, and that will mean more money, which means you can upgrade your food and tools, which in turn gets you more money. But here's the catch. Upgrading foods makes them harder to cook as they introduce more factors and more recipes along with it. For example, cooking steak goes from four different kinds of spices to seven different kinds, and the amount of recipes increases along with that by about three times as much. Burgers might require you to cook chicken patties instead of beef patties, or even skip the cooking stage and just make a very leafy burger. The reward for upgrading these meals is more money, but each upgrade is an added step of difficulty too. Because these are chosen by the player though, the game has a very steady and controlled rise in difficulty. It doesn't feel cheap or uncalled for, it comes when the player wants it to happen. On top of that, between days you'll sometimes get emails where you can bet a bit of money and then try to earn back double of that by getting a perfect streak with certain kinds of foods on your menu. You might also get a response on a dating program and your date will come by one day asking for a certain kind of food. If you successfully serve them several times, you're rewarded with some unique kitchen tools like an automatic garbage disposer that reduces the number of times you need to do the garbage chore. But the main way you'll make money and buzz is by keeping a high perfect combo throughout each day. Every good or Order will raise the buzz level for the next day, so doing well on one day will result in harder and harder future days. Messing up will lower the buzz, which means that you'll have an easier time the next day. The purpose of this whole system is that it encourages the player to experiment with different kinds of foods, but constantly aim for having perfect days, which rewards you with a nice little bit of extra cash if you can pull that off. Thus, you'll always find yourself sitting at a nice equilibrium between what you're capable of doing and what pushes your skills to the limit. And the beautiful part of that is that the game never forces you to do any of this. You can be very bland and just play the game with a very low buzz level, 
but uh, of course you're just going to be bored as heck while you play the game. By giving you many opportunities to push yourself, you're always in a position where you can be comfortable enough that you're not overwhelmed, but challenged enough that you're not bored. Because it's all silently determined by the user themselves, Cook Surf Delicious is a beautiful game that allows people of various skill levels to experience a real challenge. And I mean real challenge, because this game is so hard. Cooked Earth Delicious is 10 bucks on Steam, or about 5 bucks on iOS and Android, and there is a sequel in the works that's aiming for a release this year. I also recommend following the lead developer Chubbigans on Twitter, because... Really makes you want to eat something.